Uh, hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here, and welcome back to another crypto video. Now, I have a really interesting question for y'all, and I want you all to answer this one truthfully. Do you think that the XRP price is being manipulated? And please, I'm not going to title my video in any way, shape, or form with manipulation in there anymore, because I saw a lot of people commenting that, of course it's being manipulated, of course, or no, of course you can't prove that, or that, that. whatever, I just want you guys to give me your honest opinion, as obviously, nobody can really prove what's going on, and nobody can really pinpoint exactly how it works, yet we are suspecting of it, and looking at the likes here, well, but let's quickly see what I said. XRP is looking like it's about to take off. I think the majority of you guys would agree with that. Things are just looking really good right now. Until you realize whatever it looks like doesn't actually matter because it's being manipulated anyway. And that's actually how I go about these things and, and look at them. It's like, well, even though it may look extremely fulfilling and good, that doesn't mean it's going to happen that way. And that's inherently also my... I guess, nature to reject all these analysis that people are doing. If I see a person doing technical analysis over on YouTube, I know that for a good part, they're just trying to be their best self and trying to explain something which looks explainable. But as I've expressed before throughout these years, most of what you see is very far from the truth. And with the Bitcoin and XRP price, very obviously, I would personally say, you can't really predict what's about to happen. And if you show me an analyst that's been correct 100% of the time, well, you've got yourself a gold mine, stick to it. But the majority of people just have their words in a certain way that look as if they're right, but they're not. And I focus mostly on the news, as you guys have most likely known by now. And even though news can manipulate the price too, and we've seen, for example, in my own theory, Jeremy Hogan's video even manipulate the XFP price. I think that that's way much more of an assurance to actually make money with trading crypto rather than just focusing on technicals themselves. Yet, why the Bitcoin slash XP price are going up right now, I don't think any news can explain that. And so, then again, it draws into the people's minds. Like, is it just people's all of a sudden reaction? Is it something deeper? Is it a big billionaire? Is it a big fund? Is it the banks? Is it regulations are coming? Is it because it's summer? Is what exactly is going on with that? We cannot prove anything. And that leads me to the point of, I guess, the start of this little introduction. Guys, hodling is really a good idea. And if you're trading, make sure you have an advantage in some way, shape, or form. And one way to do that is by getting yourself free bonuses. Now, even though there is a bonus right now for about a couple more hours on the Bybit exchange, $1,600 worth of bonuses in total, $1,000 bonus for just a couple more hours. The only reason I'm telling you this right now is because that is ultimately the best thing you can do in trading. And guys, if you have a different exchange that you're using that you have this for, by all means, go about it. This is just an example. But trust me when I say that it's so much easier to quote unquote gamble, you know, trade with money that is not yours or given to you for free. It's so much easier. And I put up a couple of quotes on Twitter earlier too, explaining how a lot of people think that becoming a multimillionaire is going to solve all their problems and that all of a sudden trading and, and buying stock and buying real estate is all of a sudden going to be, going to be so simple, going to make them so much money. To be honest with you guys, there's so many new troubles that come with money that a lot of people don't think of. There's just this base layer of being able to afford the normalities like food and shelter. And then the layer above that, a lot of it just brings more and more stress. The richer that you get, the more money that you acquire, the more things that you start and whatnot. And the same thing goes for trading. The more money that you have, the more difficult it becomes. That's why these 1% challenges, for example, they work really well in the beginning. But if you're doing a 1% challenge with $100 million, that's a completely different story than doing a 1% challenge with 100 bucks. And so with trading, my little advice for people, and I think I can call this advice because it's I mean, it's, it's, it isn't harmful, is whatever you can use free money, so money that is not even yours, that you have no consequence in losing, basically, take it. And so if there's a deposit bonus, try to look into how to use it safely, basically, where you can almost not lose anything, but at least win something. And that's my personal uh, thought behind trading very often is, if you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. But if you do think you know what you're doing, then try to use free money. And if that works for you and you think you can do it all, 
then of course use whatever money is necessary or obviously if for example you're going to trade something like the settlement like i'm going to be doing once more not advice because i'm obviously not 100 percent sure it's going to work out uh, but then i guess using your own money would also be you know, i guess a normal idea uh, then again once more not advice just my own thoughts i'm a random guy on the internet not your dad not your anybody so uh make sure you understand that and don't <laughs> the only thing that is advice i can give is try to use free things instead of you know your own hard-earned money if you can and that's because a lot of this stuff is manipulated and very often you'll notice that whenever you think you're right you're still wrong it's not as easy as people make it out to be on the internet guys it's not as easy uh very fun thing <laughs> in the same fashion i saw a lot of people comment about this one just quit my job at mcdonald's because crypto is back yes fun fact you know how many people work at mcdonald's that actually are the biggest crypto advocates right now Quite a lot of them. I think a lot of Dogecoin holders actually work there. I'm not even kidding. I think a lot of 15, 16 year olds who work at McDonald's are uh, are crypto fans, but they're not really dabbling the the bigger servers of the huge coins. They're just mostly dabbling into the, I guess the, um, meme term types of coin, uh, types of coins. And I'm also noticing it in terms of subscriber growth and the views and everything that whenever crypto does a little bit better, you all of a sudden see a huge increase in how many people subscribe to the channel how many people interact how many people join and talk on discord and whatnot it's such a big change so the last four days five days or so have been really so much better than the last couple of weeks or a couple of months i should say and you've really noticed that maybe from your perspective you don't but i really noticed that the community just din diminishes whenever crypto goes down for a little period and it's really interesting to see uh, now one cool announcement ripple swell global is actually going to be around here on the 9th and 10th of november registration opens summer of 2021 so shortly here stay tuned for more information so we shall see here you have the official little um screenshot that i took from the website ripple swell global november 9th and 10th registrations open summer 2021 stay tuned for more information watch the highlights from swat 2020 um to be honest with you not sure if it's going to be an online one or an in-person one i wouldn't be able to quote on that uh, what you can do however to get this news even sooner is follow me over on twitter that is an idea and moving on we have some talkings about the distributions slash airdrops and it's a really important subject and something that i think you guys should know and must hear about so a couple of things are going to be happening to your money one thing that i should tell you guys about is the airdrops which are about to happen and there's a couple first of all there's spark slash flare you guys have most likely heard a lot about this because the the airdrop basically the the deadline date for you to sh kind of show them how much xrp you had was december 12 2020 which is a little while ago and so a lot of people are not eligible for flare slash spark from the get-go you have songbird which is basically on the same note as spark slash flare so you know that's another one that's going to be coming canary network for flare you have dflr which is actually not even a flare airdrop it's oh sorry guys not even an xrp airdrop is officially a flare airdrop you have evers and elysian and i actually have another article about it right here a little bit more in depth so here you can just kind of read through this if you want just pause it for yourself if you want to know a little bit more about it one thing i didn't even know is that there's also supposedly going to be an sflr uh to be eligible and song bird flare to eligible sgb holders i guess you're going to get your dflr which is this um little thing we mentioned right there the dflr if you're a spark holder and you're going to get some sflr so songbird flr if you're a songbird holder eventually as well didn't even think about that one before but i guess that one oh here somebody make you be fresh said it please add sflr that is confirmed it'll be airdropped with dflr but on songbird and crypto Eddie said we need a public blog to keep track of all of these i'm sure there are going to be so many otherwise vying for the community attention and i told you guys before right I told you guys before I think that airdrops are a really bad thing. They're going to ruin a part of this community. A lot of people are going to use this for their own personal gain. And trust me when I say that the majority of people making these right now are just money hungry. I'm not telling you that because I want to. I'm telling you that because you need to hear it, even though it sounds a little bit annoying. The majority of these things are meant purely to make money on your ass. Because an airdrop is one of the easiest ways to make quick money if you have a really tight community. What I mean with that is Flare right now, if they were quick with it, they could have done a really, I guess, a better job than the way they're doing it right now. Mostly on the basis that if they did it quickly, they could have set kind of the pioneer for it and, and kind of be done. And then every exchange from there on forward could have decided whether or not they'd want to support these airdrops. Right now, 
Because Flare hasn't been airdropped just quite yet, but the exchanges also have to decide to airdrop Songbird, and now also have to decide to do all these other things, but they haven't seen the success of the previous asset, Spark, it's a little bit more of a hassle. And all of these, even though these last two aren't really officially out at all just quite yet, and Songbird, there's still a lot of discussions about that, Already, exchanges are saying, hey, we don't want to actually deploy Songbird to our users, so it's only going to be Flare, for example. And then the question is going to be, okay, so this DFLR that you're going to get, how exactly is that going to work if it's on exchanges or blah de blah de blah de blah de blah Because it's going to be more and more and more from Flare themselves. It's already four that I'm hearing of right now because you have Spark, Songbird, DFLR, SFLR, and then you also have new and newer projects like these two things were announced in the last week. Uh, you can see one announcement and a week or a couple of days prior, that was the other announcement. There's mostly going to be like 10 other ones created over the next couple of weeks alone, maybe even before Flare is launched. And I told you guys before, I think it's turning into a little bit of a joke because all of these guys know if they make something on XRP on the XP Ledger, it's going to get a ton of likes, a ton of follows. Here you can see already 4,000 over the last couple of just like two days, three days. It's going to get so much attention. And it could, oh, it's so smart for these guys to do it. But... Yeah, I'm just quickly telling you guys it's mostly going to turn into be a joke. Then again, it's free money though, so I'm not saying no against it. I'm just saying, hey, look at the in intentions of why these people are doing it. Might not be because they really are that excited about the XP Ledger or XRP. They might just see where there's money signs. Then again, some of these guys are legitimate projects. Didn't read too far into it, but just understand it and think about it, all right? Think about it, think about it, think about it. Then moving on, because I don't want to sit with that for 10, 10 days. James Wallace, VP of Central Bank Engagement, shares how CBDC can enable the next wave of financial inclusion and innovation in fiscal policy and beyond. Well, I don't actually have to read through it. Obviously, it's pretty pretty simple to understand, at least in my opinion. Now, Wrath of Kahneman replied to said, curious about the feedback from governments about CBDCs on federated sidechains. Would they include robust mechanisms for revoking payments, or would the schemes otherwise avoid the issue or schemas? Um, and the reason that this is important is because in a lot of the papers that are written about these CBDCs and about utilizing blockchain technology is the finality of things. And what I mean with that is that if you're using a public ledger, things are finalized straight at the bat. If you're sending something to somebody, it's, it's sent. There's no way to get your money back. And obviously in these newer systems, that is the standard as we all know it. Yet for these older systems, that's never really been an option because what if you make a mistake? What if something wasn't supposed to happen that way? You always need to be able to revoke it. Um, and for example, with PayPal as well, one of the most difficult things that I would assume is if they had an open system completely, it is to kind of get your money back if you already sent it or yeah. With traditional money, pretty easy to send back. With crypto, pretty difficult to send back unless you have control over the private keys. And then inherently is a big problem with federated side chains too. I mean, even though it can be completely private, the, the solution that you built on there, for example, and they could literally build anything on those federated sidechains. I do wonder exactly how they're going to change it in some way, shape, or form where, theoretically speaking, payments could be revoked. And I'm kind of wondering exactly how that would look slash how that would work, but I'm also not exactly sure how these CBDC will be built on top of the XP ledger or with Ripple anyway, because at first we heard Ripple is going to be making a private ledger specifically for CBDC, and then David Swartz and others proposed the federated sidechains, which could also host CBDC. But then again, the one would be a part of the XP ledger, the other would potentially just be a new system created by Ripple we don't really know anything about. It's, um, it's pretty difficult to say. It is pretty difficult to say. And so I would not speculate on that one. I just know that I ultimately think XP will be the bridge of CBDC. And I don't know exactly where these CBDCs are going to be hosted, but nor do I really care. I guess it's going to be a little bit easier for Ripple to get access to um, being the bridge if they also host the CBDC. Yet it's not a necessity, so I think we will be fine. Then Root posted Great Graph by Misconfig XA showing the orchestra of Bitcoin cycles between the halvings, which are not exactly four years, but 210,000 blocks and seasonality. What they would have to say about that one is, uh, first of all, the 1.618 that a lot of people point out, the Fibonacci and the 0 0.618, the interesting parts about that. This is actually kind of a, a, a resumption of my earlier video from Bitcoin, where I basically question to you guys, what exactly constitutes as a bull or a bear run? It's really difficult to say. Yet, in this specific case here, they basically point out to the, to the Fibonacci ratio for how long the bullishness and bearishness lasts, or potentially also how long it lasts between 
um, getting over your top, I, I guess I would kind of call it like that for the, the one basically, right? It's like the one as to how you how long it takes to get over your top. And then 1.618, I'm not exactly sure. I guess that's till the end of the halving for the next part. And that's kind of every way through. Hmm. Yeah, I guess theoretically speaking, there could be a couple of other things attached to it because I don't really use these fractals and things too much. My Franco says, am I the only one who thinks this chart is fundamentally wrong? No logarithmic chart tests the 1.618 FIB as support. Something is wrong with it. Linear, it tests, but this isn't a linear chart. I believe training view settings are wrong. Ooh. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, 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 okay. I actually maybe should have checked out what these guys were saying about it first. Huh. Okay, all I wanted to actually show you guys that a lot of people are fine, because that's the point of why I actually have this open. Uh, so I, maybe I should have looked at the comments about people. Then again, I'm not exactly sure why we would care. You're reaching. Hmm. Well, okay. So the point I was having this open for is that people have different analysis and different ideas about how exactly these types of cycles work. And exactly whether or not there's something to be drawn behind and that brings me to the point of the previous video which is ultimately you can speculate you can speculate you can speculate even at the start of the of this video about manipulation you don't really know if they want to make you think a certain way or if it's actually the way that things are supposed to flow naturally right here you can say okay these halfings have a national or sorry guys a real scarcity effect attached to it so theoretically speaking it should make us perform in some sort of way if we know scarcity is coming yet these bigger guys with billions of dollars and you know the big money behind them most likely have the same idea that people should think about it this way and so if they act in the same fashion at one time don't actually make the price go in that fashion people are taking off their expectation losing money yada 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 it's such a great ordeal to kind of think about whether or not these things are manipulated that um you also sort of kind of lose track of everything here about whether or not things are really real and whether or not this is actually reach for example or really good analysis it's it's so difficult all of this it's like you can draw your conclusions on all these things doesn't mean you're actually right and even if you are right once it doesn't mean you'll right be right a second time and so forth as one that is so difficult guys then some breaking news and this is turning out to be a long video arthur brito now follows two people he added the ceo of polysign to it and roger Ver, which is not that interesting um, the most interesting part about this, wait a minute, world's first investor in Bitcoin startups, including Bitcoin.com, Blockchain.com, Ripple. Hold up, wait a minute, I never knew Roger Ver was invested in Ripple. Huh. But Ender said he doesn't even follow Swords, but now his baby Paula sign in standard custody is ready. And what that meant, basically, is that Arthur Brito, who is... In my own opinion, as far as I know, also a co-founder together with David Swartz of Polysign. They've now followed the CEO of Polysign as well and Standard Custody. I didn't even know he was actually that high of a position over there yet. We have been talking for a very long time about Polysign being kind of a project in the background, being the main custody solution for everything, kind of. It's slowly, I think, starting to roll the ball piece by piece, or at least... That's kind of what I'm thinking here. Still, it's very vague exactly how it's going to be working, but piece by piece, it is coming in more and more, and I'm liking it, guys, because I think Polysun is going to be a great part of this ecosystem. And then Peter Schiff mocks MicroStrategy CEO's plan to take Bitcoin to the grave. Vocal Bitcoin hater Peter Schiff criticized MicroStrategy CEO for announcing that the company hopes to store its Bitcoin forever. Which is about to be really interesting, but that's actually one fun thing that people talk about when they talk about billionaires, which is that billionaires very often have billions of dollars worth of unrealized gains to not pay capital gains tax and also just stay rich without actually, you know, having that necessary part of cashing things out. What I mean with that is that, theoretically speaking, Michael Saylor and the people investing into the company MicroStrategy, for example, can always hold these Bitcoin without ever selling them because ultimately the company... This valuation will increase and well the valuation of everything will keep increasing and so ultimately why would you have to sell it if all those things are going up you don't need to actually realize any profit for any other purpose than to use it for something else but if the purpose of your money realization is to buy more of that which you real realize just now then what's the purpose of it right and so from that perspective, yeah, I, I would understand why they just want to hold it forever because ultimately that's the purpose of the company. Peter Schiff liked to mock him. We all know he gets attention from mocking people in the crypto space. That's what he does. I don't really give him too much attention and neither should you. That's why I won't read his tweet. 
And uh, yeah, guys, once more, check out buy a bit down below. There's a couple more hours worth of free bonuses. So once more, check it out. Act quick if you want to get it. And I'll see you guys again in another crypto video later today.